Hello. Uh, I now have the great pleasure of talking to an actress whose work no doubt many of you are familiar with. She's worked on such iconic series as The Eden Line, Faulty Towers, Dad's Army, and with so many comedy greats, Mokwen Wise, Two Ronnies, even Eric Sykes. But actually today we're going to be talking about a series that she sadly didn't work on, which is, of course, Doctor Who. But it as is always the case, it is an enormous pleasure to be talking to the actress April Walker. Thank you for joining us, April. Hello, Alex. It's a great pleasure to join you. Um, and uh, this is all very exciting, doing Zoom in lockdown. Yes, who'd have thought uh, four months ago that we'd be using Zoom and, and doing an interview on this rather than on a stage somewhere? Absolutely. Um, I'd much rather meet you in person, but it, this is fun. It's a new adventure for me. Well, I just, I just hope it works for, for us and everyone at home then. And how are you finding the lockdown? I'm very fortunate. I live in the country and I've got a garden and I enjoy walking. And there are the most wonderful walks down here where I am. And so I really don't find it too difficult. But the thing I miss are people. Um, I miss uh, social contact very much indeed. I'm very much a people person. No, certainly. You know, well, ho hopefully when all this is over, you're able to uh, catch up with everyone properly rather than just over Zoom. Um, as I said in the introduction, we wanted to talk to you about Doctor Who, which uh, amongst all of the roles and series you've worked on, I do feel somewhat guilty talking about this. But was it a series you had any awareness of? Were you a fan of it? Do you know, I remember Doctor Who when I was a child. I mean, it must go back an awfully long time. Or certainly if I wasn't a child, I was a, a teenager or a young person. And it was a gripping series uh, and very, very exciting and enjoyable. But there was a certain cutoff point with Doctor Who for me. Um, and that came about 73. And after the incident that we're going to talk about, I sort of didn't watch Doctor Who anymore. Although I must say, I think the young lady who's playing it now is absolutely excellent. So you, you've seen the odd bit of, of Jodie Whittaker, the current Doctor? I have. But you see, I've been an admirer of her work for many years now. And uh, so I wanted to see how she got on with this. And she's brilliant, I think. Terrific. Yes, yeah, so it's a very bold version of, of, the, of the show. And I think she's really run with it and made it her own fantastically. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. No, wonderful. So having known about the series and, and being a fan of it, when you got a call from your agent that they were looking for a new companion, that must have been quite an exciting conversation. It was very exciting. Uh, I was so, so very, very nervous. And I got this call from my agent and I said, what, to play opposite John Pertwee? I mean, you mean the lead, do you? And um, he said, yes, yes. Uh, the appointment is going to be on the 8th of March at half past four at the uh, rehearsal rooms at Acton, BBC rehearsal rooms. And go wearing something that you can move in. Go wearing, you know, trousers and um, you know, fitted shirt or something, because I expect it to be quite a, an adventurous audition. And I thought, my God, what's this going to be? Well, it was an adventurous audition. Uh, first of all, I met Barry Letts, who was the producer. And he said, we're going to do it as if it's a read through. It is a walking rehearsal. It's a camera rehearsal. And then we'll do a take. Well, of course, I hadn't seen the script before, so I didn't know it off by heart. But I did uh, try and remember as we were going along and also all the moves because it incorporated so many different things. I was being meeting a monster and being absolutely petrified. I was trying to climb away over walls and fences and then falling down in a dead faint. I had to laugh like mad. I had to cry. I had to shout and get frantically angry. I mean, it, it had everything in it. And this audition went on for an hour and a half, which is quite the longest audition I've ever done. And then Barry said, April, you know, 
I have seen many actresses from this part and I simply was at my wit's end because I didn't find the right person. And now I found her. It's going to be you. And I mean, I couldn't believe it. I was absolutely, well, you can imagine, I was over the moon with joy. And so we went back to the television centre, to his office, and I asked if I might use the telephone, because there were no mobile phones in those days, to phone my husband and let him know, because, you know, he'd be wondering. And so he said, oh, that's fantastic. We must go out to dinner tonight. Um, and it was all stations go and the contract came and I signed it and I got the scripts and I was measured for my costumes and all the rest. And then about 10 days or a fortnight later, I got a phone call from Barry Letts to say, April, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm afraid you're not going to be doing Doctor Who. And I said, why? He said, I'm afraid John says you're not right and he can't work with you in Doctor Who and I said but why I worked with John we were on on tour and in the West End in a play I played his niece in O Clarence which was an adaptation of Blanding's Castle I played Jennifer Parslow Parslow who was a very hearty girl you're a great sort of rider horsewoman you know really roughy toughy woman and John said, no, no, you see, I think Sarah Jane should be a small, probably dark haired girl who could be thought of as my daughter. Unfortunately, April would only be thought of as my mistress. And being as how it was almost based for children and young people, that wouldn't quite have been the right balance. And although I saw where he was coming from, it was very, very difficult. It really was. And so we were completely sworn to secrecy because it would have been so unfair to whoever actually played the part. And in fact, she was a lovely lady. I never met her, uh, Elizabeth Sladen, but she was so completely different from me. And um, she did the part extremely well. But it was a very, very big disappointment as you may imagine of course because this would have been one of your sort of first regular parts in the series i take it um it would i just finished doing three months on crossroads as um david hunter's mistress there you go again you see it's typecasting um and i was then going to start working with dick emery um on his comedy series which is coming up and I was doing a lot of commercials and things, but the thought of actually that part in Doctor Who was fabulous. But there we are, it's not to be. So you say you got as far as you know, costume fitting, scripts. Would you got as far as meeting the director for the first story, which is Alan Bromley? No, I didn't. No, I didn't meet any of the directors. Um, yeah, that was the end of that. <laughs> I did get paid because the contract was signed, but every time I worked for the BBC, which subsequently was quite a lot because I started working on the two Ronnie's series as well. Um, and then I went on to do 40,000 things, but um, the money that I earned from the other shows from the BBC were deducted from my Doctor Who money, which I suppose was fair. Um, I was getting money anyway, so that was fine. <laughs> But am I right in thinking after this, you did work with John Pertwee on the Navy Lark? Yes. Yes, I did. I think that was um, in 1976 we worked together and we did the very last series of the Navy Lark. And we were perfectly civil to each other. Um, but I could never quite forgive him. No, which is, is totally understandable. But the Navy Lark was another... You know, oh, it was well, a, a very merry romp. Um, it, it was just fun. It was a lovely cast. Ronnie Barker was in it, T.P. McKenna, uh, Tenniel Evans. Um, oh gosh, I can't remember the names of the other lovely people, but it was enormous fun. And we rehearsed in front of and, and um, did the show in front of a, an audience. 
at a little theater in the basement along Lower Regent Street. It was called the Paris Studio. And I also recorded Morecambe and Wise shows there as well. Um, but uh, it was enormous fun to do. And it was a laugh. Uh, and we all got on very well indeed. And, and you know, John and I were fine together and he did give me a lift home in his rather lovely sports car. And he said, do you understand April? And I said, yes, John, I do. I do understand, but I don't know if I can forgive. I suppose he should really have been consulted at the outset before Barry made the final decision to say that I'd got the part because he was, you know, he was a big star, he's a big name and he was Doctor Who. But anyway, it's a long, long time ago now. And uh, I now can talk about it, although we were all sworn to con complete secrecy at the time. Of course, yeah. And as more final question, as I don't want to take up too much of your time, with your appreciation of Jodie Whittaker and her as a doctor, if the offer came along, would you be interested in being in the new series? Of course I would. It would be wonderful. Oh, I actually knew, I knew Patrick Troughton very well um, because we worked together with the two Ronnies. We did a, a little film secrets together. And uh, now he was the most charming man. He was absolutely delightful. But I think he was the only doctor who I've actually met. But um, no, a lovely guy. Mm. Yes, of course, I'd love to do it. I'd love to. Well, I think the, the petition starts here, really, to get you in the new series. And, uh, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> well, fingers crossed. And, and sadly, time is against us. But I'd just like to say, April, thank you very much for your time and, and for talking to us about uh, a perhaps less straightforward part. But thank you very much. It's been a very great pleasure, Alex. Thank you so much for inviting me. Bye, everyone. <laughs>